Hey guys, welcome to Smart Dog Wrestling Reviews. I'm your host, Boise. And Stephanie McMahon this week announced that she had an historic announcement to make. Did this announcement live up to its hype? Let's find out. This is Raw Review. So we started off the show with Vince McMahon in the ring and a ton of superstars at the entrance point. And this was this was great. I like this. This made the event feel really important. Having Vince start off the show, welcoming everyone in his iconic "Welcome to Monday Night Raw" voice. I love that. Um, and then calling out Stephanie, my man, calling out Triple H, and saying we've got a big announcement, and these two will be leading this um, this this announcement. It was great. It was really strong. Uh, Triple H's absolutely brilliant promo about women's wrestling was fantastic. Check that out. Uh, Triple H still has it uh, for promo work. He just he makes everything he says feel more important. So that was great. Uh, Stephanie made the big announcement herself. We're having our first all women's pay per view in October and it's called Evolution. At first I was like, oh, that makes sense because Triple H is Evolution. He's. Uh, it's not named after Evolution, the faction. It's it's named after the women's Evolution. Right, I get it now. I get it. Still would have been cool if Ric Flair came out, Batista and Randy Orton just all came out then. I go, yeah, we get our own pay-per-view. What? It's not for us. Ah, <laughs> but yeah, um, it was great. Um, it really it the I think the big thing for me was when they announced that it's going to have women from the uh, past present and future all taking part and that what that means is pretty much this um, the Raw women's title will be on the line the NXT women's title will also be defended and the Smackdown women's title will also be defended on the pay-per-view as well as the May Young Classic will, final will be taking part on this pay-per-view this is all great I love this if now if WWE did something really special and added I don't know a women's tag team division that would be rather good as well so yeah it was big news and i'm really behind this i think this is a great step for wwe nxt uh you know is already leading the way in women's wrestling in my opinion uh tna have done this before they've they're the one of the first companies i can really think of who've had all women pay-per-views before so WWE finally doing it makes sense. Uh, the roster's big enough, but saying 50 women from the past, future, and present, I can't wait to see who they are going to be. But we already know Lita, Beth Phoenix, and Trish Stratus will be taking part in some way at the pay per view. So already building up to be absolutely epic. So for an opening segment, because it is so historic, I'm going to give it a legendary 9 out of 10. Mainly because Triple H's promo was fantastic. And like I said, I really was hoping that you know, Ric Flair, Batista and Randy Orton came out when they said Evolution. But yeah, it was fun. This swiftly moves us on to the first match of the night and it was a championship match for the first match. And it was for the Raw Tag Team Championships. And that was the B Team defending their titles against the, the leaders of Worlds, Woken Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt. And what can I say? It's like every time these teams have a match, it just doesn't work out as well as I always hope. I'm a big fan of the B team. I think their gimmick is really good. And I'm a big fan of the leaders of Worlds. It just feels like something is missing out. And I definitely think this feud has has run its course, but I, I've got a feeling it hasn't. I've got a feeling they're going to pull this on till rest SummerSlam and have that as the final blowout. But yeah, the B team won because Curtis Axel knocked uh, Matt Hardy into a pinning position by accident, got the pain. They were surprised they won. Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt were about to do their wonderful, you know, wonderful! Um, Thing, but instead they turned on them and it looks like we might see a much darker Woken Matt Hardy which would be good to see I think the character definitely needs it for the match itself there's a lot of goofiness in it and I really I'm not a big fan of that I think it takes away too much from the matches itself right now but saying that the the B team's old gimmick is the goofy oh my god I can't believe they've won kind of gimmick so for me it's gonna get a 6 out of 10 because 
end of the day, I'm glad the B team are still Raw Tag Team Champions. Next up, we had Sasha Banks and Bailey beating up some uh, local talent. Um, this was also involving a backstage interview where they were so excited about the first ever women's pay-per-view. Of course, every woman and every superstar talked about this until we got to the main event. Uh, but yeah, I was it. It was interesting. It it. Let's first things first. Day one, that was obviously going to happen when you saw it was local talent they were teaming up against. The only thing I just I'm really not happy with is we had this. We had this all stupid thing of going to therapy, that didn't work, uh, they, ha they had a tag team match and yet somehow that tag team match managed to mend everything and now they are BFS. What was this whole build up for the last couple of months of Bailey and Sasha Banks uh, falling apart slowly and slowly and slowly and we get to the bit where they're finally about to clash and they go to therapy and now they're friends again. It just feels like a waste of time. It's like WWE had this really big idea and it was going to be really good. I mean, someone, someone, some executive went, yeah, let's not do that. Let's just make them friends again because we kind of need them as uh, friends because it sells merch more. And that's how it feels. It literally feels like a storyline was rushed to the conclusion and it was the wrong conclusion. They should have turned Sasha Banks heel or Bailey heel, one of them heel, and led on to SummerSlam where they could have a big feud. Right now, it just feels like an absolute waste of time. And I'm so angry with this. I am more angry with this than anything after after a lot of things. But this really annoyed the crap out of me. So I'm giving this... No, screw this. This match gets a 2 out of 10. Mainly because they jerked us around with this whole storytelling. 2 out of 10. Screw you, Bailey and Sasha Banks. Well, it's not your fault. Screw you, WWE writers. Screw you. You... you Took away a good story. It could have been a good story. Next up, we had Braun Strowman cut a decent promo, pretty much, uh, saying how proud he is, especially of his mixed match tag team partner, Alexa Bliss. Uh, people got a little bit rowdy for that one, and he says, calm down, which was great. It was a good little sense of humor, which you don't often get to see Braun, you know, showing his character. And he was interrupted by none other than Kevin Owens. And Kevin Owens cut a hell of a promo. Um, I'm, I am a huge fan for Kevin Owens. I think he's one of the best talkers, workers, and literally he's a, 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 a talent that WWE don't use in the right way too often. And this promo just shows how good he really is. Um, it pretty much states, look, Bron, you want to know the truth? The reason why I wanted to be your friend, easy. My son thought it would be cool, but I was friends with a monster. And I tried to be friends, you didn't want to do that, and now my family look at me like I'm destroyed. There's something beaten of me. I've lost something. And I'm going to take everything like you've done to me, taking everything away from me, and I'm going to take it away from you. Uh, Baron Corbin comes out and he says, look, Braun, you have anger issues. I've talked to Stephanie McMahon and she's told me I'm in charge to sort this out. He calls out Jinder Mahal and Jinder Mahal tries to calm him down in his own mantra of uh, Indian beliefs and you know, uh, Jinder Mahal still gets a lot of heat which is great. This just shows you, Jinder Mahal's heat is, is now radioactive and it's good to see. And Braun just goes, I've got my own mantra. And he goes, get these hands, get these hands. And he destroys Samuel Singh and Jinder Mahal. Backstage, Kevin Owens and Baron Corbin speak to Stephanie McMahon. And she agrees with Kevin Owens to allow him to have a SummerSlam match. If he wins, either by um, pin, submission, or if Braun Strowman gets DQ'd, Kevin Owens gets the Money in the Bank suitcase. This is really good. This is a really good way to build up that match, and it's a good stipulation. Especially because we all know Bron really doesn't need the suitcase. Someone like Kevin Owens could use it a lot better. So for me, this could be a good way to take the suitcase off Bron without making him look too weak. So for me, really good little segment, good little promos from both Kevin Owens and Braun Strowman. So for me, I'm giving this a 6 out of 10. Next up, we had Mickey James taking on Natalia with Alexa Bliss around the ring watching on. And I really honestly forgot about this match while I was writing up 
And I forgot, I, I honestly, I, I, it was such a boring match. And I watched it, I did watch it, I know I watched it. And my notes were, for the whole match were, this is a really lame typical match. Um, Nikki James won thanks to the help of uh, Alexa Bliss get interfering. Uh, Mickey James got the pin, one, two, three. It's, it's a very standard heels win because they have an extra person with them around the ring. Uh, Natalia just looks stupid. She dominated the majority of the match. She looked, Natalia looks good in the ring. I, it, it's just that she's being used as a catalyst while uh, Ronda Rousey is not there. So for me, with all that in mind, I'm going to give this a, a 3 out of 10. Next up we got another promo and this was by the Authors of Pain. First time ever they've actually cut a promo on Raw. And they pretty much stated, look, we're looking for competition and we want every any tag team a part Titus Worldwide because we have dominated them, we've beaten them, we don't want to see them again. Obviously Titus of Worldwide came out, confronted them, Apollo cut to, a decent-ish promo, it's probably his best promo since he's moved to Raw. Um, and states, look, Titus showed me how to be a good man, a good father, all this lot. And Titus Worldwide and Apollo, well, Titus and Apollo, stepped up to offers of pain and actually kicked him out of the ring, which was rather surprising. Is this? I was hoping this feud would have been over and done with. It kind of, it's, it's one of those feuds which... You know you're not going to be invested because the matches aren't going to be great. But if we can see the Authors of Pain dominate yet again on Titus Worldwide and make him feel like a legitimate scary force, it it will work out for best for them. But it just shows you what what's going on with the tag team division right now. Especially when the writers haven't got a clue what to do with you. They just throw you with any other tag team and hope that something good happens. And that's how it feels right now with Titus Worldwide and the Authors of Pain. Yet again we had a Mojo Rowley match on Raw and it was against Tyler Breeze again. And it was somehow was worse. Not Tyler's fault, no, Tyler actually showed me why he's such a good athlete. And the fans were behind Tyler. No one booed or cheered for Mojo. It's funny that. It's funny when a mid-card talent who hasn't got any talent doesn't get any heat or anything, it's it's that void of nothingness, which Mojo Rowley is very much famous for right now. Um, yeah, Mojo wins yet again, and it just, I, during the match they actually did an interview with Bobby Roode. Wow, they cut a promo during the match, that's how bad they know Mojo actually is. They had to distract the audience on TV and let them watch Bobby Roode instead. Typical. Uh, this gets a 3 out of 10 because it's pretty much the same match we got last time. Crap. After that we had we had Finn Balor taking on Drew McIntyre in a singles match. Uh, McIntyre did have his BFF Dolph Ziggler outside the ring, the Intercontinental Champion. And I was, this for me, when this got announced last night, I was like, this is going to be the match of the night. Who cares about Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns? This is going to be the match of the night. And it was close. This was so close to being the match of the night. It was a good match. And the ending did help it a little bit to kind of knock it onto the match afterwards. But what a match. I really want a full on match with between McIntyre and Balor. That will be a fantastic match when they actually get round to it. Uh, Finn was about to win with the uh, with his finisher. Dolph obviously got involved. Uh, referee saw it. Finn got the win by DQ. Uh, Dolph and McIntyre start beating up on Finn Balor. Uh, Seth Rollins comes out to help him. It's a good way. And Kyle Angle says, "Look, we're having a tag team match now." Um, so referee, ring that bell. Uh, for me, a good match, decent fun. Finn Balor and McIntyre were really excellent again just uh, i just wish we had a bit more time with it uh, so for me i'm gonna give this a six out of ten even though the match ended in dq and it moved on to another match it was still good enough to actually get a score on it it's up. and like i said that moved us on to a tag team match where we saw finn balor and seth rollins teaming up to take on Dolph ziggler and mcintyre and hell this was the match of the night what a match 
It was fantastic to see, it was fun, it was exciting. Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins have just got such a good chemistry. And McIntyre and Finn as well, all four men. I honestly, in my head, are going, why is this not a, tri uh, a fatal four match for the Intercontinental Championship? I know uh, Dolph and McIntyre are BFFs right now. But what a match that could be. That could steal SummerSlam on its own. Just having those four men beat the crap out of each other. Uh, but yeah, it was entertaining. It was fun. And Seth was absolutely... He was like a turf. They call McIntyre the seven. No. For Finn was injured in, 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 story, you know, in the story of the match. He was beaten and bruised from the attack from McIntyre and... Dolph, but he put on a great match for the majority of it, but for a long time, Seth was the man, and he literally made it turn around and won the match for him. Again, such a good match, and giving this a 7 out of 10, it was brilliant. I recommend, out of all the matches, watch this one, because it was fun to watch. Next up, we had Ember Moon versus Liv Morgan. Yeah, the same match we had a couple of weeks back, and um, week back... Wow, yeah. Literally the same kind of match. Um, Liv just didn't actually get out of it. the match itself. It, it, it was just a squash match. Ember Moon was dominant from start to finish, which you expect, and she won. Uh, for me, yeah, that's fine. Good decision. But, you know, it's 50-50 booking, let's be honest, with the Ember Moon and the Riot Squad stuff. What is going on with that? I have no idea. But, yeah, it... it it was a match. I'm giving it a 3 out of 10 because it's the same match we've seen several times now. Then we got all night we were seeing Elias trying to play his new uh, song from his new debut album which was on Spotify, iTunes and during the night Michael Cole's going, it's up on the charts. It's number 12 in the chart. It's number 6 in the chart. It's number 4 in the charts. Yeah, Michael Cole. No one actually cared. We'll check the charts out ourselves to see where it is. Um, but yeah, it was great. It was good fun all night that Elias was trying to play a song. Uh, he finally got permission by Kurt Angle saying, look, you're not going to get disturbed. Just play your song. And Elias starts playing, stops halfway through the song and goes, what's here, man? Oh, God. No, it just makes me feel bad singing this song. Because this town sucks. And heel at his best. Brilliant promos throughout the night where he's trying to play the song. It was good fun all night. So I'm going to give it, because from start to finish, this was all they were doing with Elias. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10, because it was fun. It was entertaining. So I enjoyed it. And this moves us on to the main event of the night, and it was Roman Reigns versus Bobby Lashley. A rematch from Extreme Rules, but difference is the winner would take on Brock Lesnar at, Extreme, uh, at SummerSlam. Why am I saying Extreme Rules? It was at SummerSlam. And guess who won? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Roman won. Yeah, he won again. It, it, it was brilliant. You know, it's just such a stupid 50-50. It's not even 50-50 booking. It's it's literally the, the writing team going, well, Roman wins. That's literally on a piece of paper that all they write is Roman wins. That's 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 it. Yeah, Roman wins. It, it, it's, I looked back. I actually did a little bit of uh, research. For this uh, video this time around and interesting fact Roman Reigns after this victory will be on his seventh attempt to win the universal title that's the most out of all other wrestlers on the raw roster the only two people close to him on five attempts are Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman that's right everyone else no one else has really had that many chances ridiculous Absolutely ridiculous. Do you, I, I honestly looked back and I was like, oh my god, I can't remember. I, I remember when Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens were battling it out for the Universal title. And it was actually really exciting because we got to see the Universal title on a heel champion, which was great. And we saw a real t contender who the fans were really behind going for the title. It's just crazy, isn't it? It's absolutely crazy that happened. But yeah, uh, Roman won. It was a pretty much typical match. Bobby Lashley dominated for the majority of the match. Roman Reigns started getting momentum. Spear win. 
shake hands at the end. Because obviously Bobby Lashley is still a baby face. Uh, so for me, 5 out of 10. Main event really. It's a shame. And there you go guys, that was Raw for this week. So what did I think? I think the historic, you know, announcement of Evolution pay-per-view is fantastic. I am 100% this 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 pay-per-view, I think it's going to be brilliant. Um, Roman Reigns winning, no surprise there. Seth Rollins and Finn Balor, McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler stealing the show. Of course they did, they are the best. Uh, four wrestlers in the company right now on Raw, so no shocker there. Um, Elias was brilliant all night, fantastic. The women's division still is an absolute chaotic match, so good luck on that. And the tag team division is just doing something, I guess. And there you go, guys. That was Raw for this week. Uh, my final score. 5 out of 10, even though there were some really good bits, the majority of it was just plain and boring or something we've already seen before. So it's a bit of a disappointment really, because you think about it, really good historic event, really good match between Finn and McIntyre, I mean, Seth Rollins and Finn and Dolphin, you know, a tag team match between those guys, but everything else was just typical. And there you go, guys. What did you think of Raw this week? Leave it in the comments below. If you do like our videos, please like, subscribe, and follow us on Twitter at Boise88. And if you want to keep up to date, press that bell so you can do. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Boise88. And I'll see you guys next time on Smart Talk Wrestling Reviews. <laughs>